Bonjour, mini superheroes. Today here, I'm in Paris, France right now, pretty wild. I'm on my way to Denmark, actually, but I stopped here for a few days on the way in. Gonna do some Lego hunting, some sightseeing, and sometimes a little bit of both at the same time. So, let's get into it. So my journey started in the lounge at the Montreal airport, where I worked on some content there before the big seven hour flight into Paris. As soon as I landed, I made sure to drop my gear off at the hotel and started hitting toy stores as fast as I could, hoping to find some big Lego finds. I was in Paris for the first time in 2017 and saw tons of toys while I was there, and while I did find some Lego back then, it didn't seem to be as popular in this city as I've seen it in other places. Talking to some locals at the toy stores, the reasons they speculate that this is the case is because people in Paris have pretty small apartments, generally speaking, and they apparently tend to move fairly often, so Lego isn't a super conducive hobby to have in this city, because it does require a lot of space once you get a lot of it, and it's not really all that easy to move if you have a really big collection. That being said, I still love seeing toy stores in other countries, and in some ways it reminds me a lot of home because they do have some similar things, but in other ways you see a lot of things that don't pop up very often in the US. So I found tons of great Indiana Jones stuff, and this one in particular, the Map Room Indie, hasn't even come out in the States. It's supposed to be like a Target exclusive, but we'll see. But I've got it in hand here, so I'm gonna have to buy it. That's awesome. But anyways, this was Album Comics in Paris. Definitely a cool first stop. Now, the great thing about Paris is it's so walkable, whereas in the U.S. you pretty much have to drive everywhere, so I really enjoyed being able to sightsee and check out all kinds of different stuff as I was walking around. So I'm literally just randomly walking around and I found this really cool toy store, I believe it's pronounced King Jouet, and it was really fun to walk around and see all of the different toys they have here because, again, it's so different from the U.S. They've got a Lego Dreams section, and it's cool because they actually have a couple of them built. I don't think I've ever seen a store just have, like, the Lego sets out like that. Of course, you know I want all of those little store displays back there, but so cool to see. Of course, what I really want is this figure. Definitely not for sale because it's a display piece, but gosh, is that cool. This store was definitely a mother load of new Lego sets, and it was so cool to see such a huge selection, but unfortunately, they didn't really have anything retired or anything so rare I couldn't find it on my own in the U.S., so I didn't really pick anything up. All right, so that was definitely a cool stop, but the fun isn't done, so let's keep checking out Paris and see what it has to offer. On the way back to my hotel, I stopped at the Luxembourg Gardens, which were absolutely beautiful to witness and walk through, and man, this was right about the time my feet started hurting, because I'm doing a lot of walking on this trip, but you gotta continue on, and the best is yet to come. So, I just checked into my hotel room, and it is really, really tiny. I mean, this is kind of what you expect for Europe, because all the rooms here are pretty small, but dang. This is really tiny. Got your bathroom over here. But you know, it is pretty nice. You got this little balcony out here and you get a nice view of the architecture. Definitely what you want out of Paris. So my next stop was a bit of a fever dream. It's a place called Nom Dun Brick and it's a really cool used Lego store. Now, he carries a lot of brand new stuff too, but there was some really cool old retired stuff there and he had just moved. So the store was actually a little bit messy if I'm being completely honest, but Again, he just moved, so he literally just put everything in the store and had to figure out where it's gonna go. He was a super nice guy, and I loved seeing how many Marvel CMFs he had on display, and it was an absolutely awesome stop that was worth it. I just hope next time it's a little bit more organized, but I have nothing bad to say about the store because it was awesome. What an awesome day it's been in Paris. I'm not done yet. Got one more stop at a cool little place called the Lego Store, and then I've got some crazy dinner plans. So stay tuned for that, and let's get over to the Lego Store and check it out. So this is the Lego Store at the Forum des Halles in Paris. Hope I'm getting that pronunciation right, but the store was packed to the brim with new sets. They also had the new Halloween build a minifigure pieces, which was quite cool, and the displays there were awesome. The store doesn't really have a ton of exclusives or anything like that, so the main highlight was honestly seeing the epic mocks they had in their windows and the inner store displays like the actual Eiffel Tower set on display in Paris and this massive mock of the Notre Dame that was literally jaw-dropping to see in person and walk around. Of course they also had the Paris architecture skyline but since I already had that I opted to get the smaller Paris postcard instead as a cool little memento of my visit. Speaking of mementos, I also got my Lego passport stamped and really enjoyed the visit, even though I really wish there were more exclusive items to be found at this store. So after that, I went to a spot called Sacre Frenchie for a great meal, but wait till you hear what happened there. So I'm sitting here enjoying my meal, and my phone is about to die, but I've got to get the content because 
that's the whole point. So I wrote down my hotel address on the inside of the Lego box just in case my phone dies so I actually know how to get home. <laughs> So the meal ended up taking forever to actually get delivered, and I got impatient and ended up building my Paris Lego set there. I really enjoyed that, and I do kind of want to break the stigma of building Lego in public. I think it's so fun, and I think it's something that we definitely shouldn't judge. Anyways, I had this lamb dish, and it was absolutely insane. One of the best dinners I've ever had, and of course, the view there was awesome too. And yeah, that was the end of day one, so let's jump into day two now. Hey everybody, day two in Paris. Got some trash behind me beautiful sights. Speaking of beautiful sights, we're going to see some awesome stuff today, so let's get to it and enjoy Paris. So my second and final day in Paris was filled with a six-hour walking tour of the city where we walked almost nine miles across the historic sites of Paris to pack in as much into one day as humanly possible. I'm going to give you the speed run of what we all saw, so here we go. I started off at the hilltop of the beautiful Sacre Coeur with the breathtaking view of the Parisian skyline from atop. After that, we walked down the steps from John Wick 4 and took the subway to the Notre Dame en route to the Seine River, which is where we walked along to one of the biggest museums in the world, the Louvre. This is home to many priceless artifacts and art, including an actual Egyptian sphinx and several pieces of art by Leonardo da Vinci, including the actual Mona Lisa. This is an unbelievable museum to experience and one of my all-time favorites. And it's so big that if you spent at least one minute in front of every piece in the museum without sleeping at all or taking any bathroom or food breaks, it would take you over 30 days to see every piece there. So that's pretty nuts when you sit and think about it. After that, we walked to the Eiffel Tower and hopped on a boat cruise of the Seine River to see the beautiful architecture of the city up close and personal. The tour ended there, but I decided to buy a ticket and ascend all the way to the top of the Eiffel Tower to experience that incredible view for myself, and let me tell you, it was truly remarkable to witness. Honestly, I'm rarely left speechless, but this was one of those times and it made me really want to buy the giant Lego set now. I also wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't tell you they actually sell the Lego set in the Eiffel Tower. That is pretty insane to me, and I just had to laugh seeing that. Of course it's here. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> To wrap things up, I treated myself to a fancy dinner in the Eiffel Tower. Yes, like all the way up. Because why not? The food was literally insane, and I'll be talking about it more in depth over on my food blog on Instagram, which is called Can't Buy Me Lunch. So if you want to follow me there to check out more food content, I would love to see you over there. All right, guys. Well, hey, I'm here in Billund, Denmark. I finally landed. I'm here for an exciting week of Lego stuff, but here's the haul from Paris. So at the Paris Lego store, of course, I picked up this cool little baggage tag of the little French guy and his French bulldog. So I thought that's cool, and it's exclusive to that store. I also got this. It's kind of a novelty thing, but it's a zero euro souvenir of the Eiffel Tower. Just kind of funny that I paid real money for fake money, but I guess that's the way it goes. Kind of along those lines, you can get these collectible coins across, I guess you can get them across Europe, but particularly in Paris. So this one you can only get at the summit of the uh, top of the Eiffel Tower. So you can only get this one if you go all the way to the top, which of course I did. And then I got this one at the Louvre Museum, which is quite cool. And I also got this one of the Mona Lisa from the Louvre Museum. So those are cool. Those will look good on my antique collectibles shelf. I also got this pin of the Mona Lisa. Honestly, uh, I'm not really sure where I'm going to put it, but it is pretty cool. So that's fun. Then I got these Lego pieces at that Lego store that I went to, thanks to the owner, Jack. So I have a friend in the U.S. that's trying to complete up their Marvel collectible minifigure series. And they told me which ones they needed, so I picked up these ones for him. So definitely cool there. He also gave me this. Guys, look, I don't speak French, so I'm not even going to try to pronounce any of this. But there's just random pieces in this bag, and this was like a Lego promotional with, uh, I guess, this store, which I'm not going to try to pronounce. But, hey, it's pretty cool. I ended up with a Paris exclusive item at the end of the day. Speaking of Paris exclusives, this, wasn't, it, this one isn't exclusive to Paris per se, but I bought it there because now when I look at it on my shelf, I'll always remember it. And I did actually open it up because... I built it at dinner one night, so I'll have to rebuild it. You know, some pieces fell off, of course. 
rebuild it when I get home, but I also wrote my hotel address on the box because my phone was about to die. And I was honestly scared to death I was gonna get stuck and have no idea how to get back to my hotel. So I'm definitely gonna keep this box too because that's pretty fun. Finally, the last thing I got in Paris was this Indiana Jones map room figure. This is about six inches tall for scale. And this has not come out in the US yet. And I don't know, I just had an impulse buy and I couldn't live without it. So had to pick that up. So anyways, that is the Paris haul. And thanks for checking out this vlog, guys. I've got more content coming up soon from Billund, Denmark. Like I said, the whole reason I'm here now is to work on some cool Lego related stuff here in the headquarters and home of the brick. So it's great to be back in Billund. I can't wait to show you everything I'm up to and be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of that. Catch you guys later and be good out there.